Hi, I'm Lynn and this is today's project. A kid size desk and chair made out of plywood. This was cut on my CNC machine and in this video I want to share the whole process of making this and let's just say there were a few alterations and improvements along the way. Uh, so CNC explorations, design thoughts, that kind of thing. Now there are full plans available, both for cutting on a CNC machine uh, or using a circular saw and a jigsaw. Available for free for my patrons at $5 and up or available for purchase in my shop. So, um, a couple of weeks ago I built this uh, full-size desk using my 5x10 foot CNC machine. It was made completely out of a 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood uh, with angled legs and it's been really great. And here's a little model that I made. We kind of see the proportions, love this design, it's been perfect. So I have a two and a half year old kid and naturally got me thinking that perhaps I could scale down this design and make a desk for him. I mean perhaps he's a bit on the young side but eventually he's going to need a desk. So I went to work designing it, basically shrunk it and uh, figured half inch plywood uh, would be a good idea for this size. When I designed the full size desk, I had the legs and the rails made out of separate pieces. Another thing I was thinking about, um, if I had no limitations at all in terms of material, what would be kind of neat would be to uh, make the cut here with the rail and the legs one cut. For a full size desk, that would take up basically the whole sheet, it would be too large. But now when I'm working with a smaller size desk, this suddenly became much more feasible. And the height of the desk that I'm designing right now uh, will measure uh, 14 and 3 quarter inches. Okay, now if I'm making a desk, I might as well make a chair to go with it. I wanted it to complement the desk, so featuring a similar style with angled legs, rounded corners, and pieces that fit into each other to assemble. Um, as you can see, I'm designing this all for a 4 by 8 sheet. So get ready for cutting, and when I first cut out the big desk, initially I had it cutting at a really really slow speed. Um, and using a feed speed of 40 inches per minute with a plunge cut of 10 inches per minute, uh, so I upped the speed uh, and the feed bit a bit, and cut out everything a little bit faster. So for this first cut, I used an upcut bit and a feed rate of 400 inches per minute, and I took 4 passes for each cut. Uh, now it cut fine, but as you can see there was a fair amount of fuss, like not a very clean cut. It resulted in a nice cut on the bottom, but uh, not a very clean cut on the top. I mean you can scrape this off rather easily, but it's not super crisp, so not ideal. Okay, so time for desk one, because this is version number one, to be assembled. Uh, so here we have all the pieces, two for each leg to be glued together, four rails and one top. So first of all, gluing and nailing the legs together. And I really should have put glue on both sides of the leg pieces, not just the one here. And then chiseling the corners slightly on the rails here to fit into the groove. Since the CNC cuts um, a roundish hole, the rails needed to be round on the ends as well, slightly. And uh, yeah, here I'm thinking that the pocket or the groove is probably located a touch too far on the sides, uh, especially if you were cutting this on a jigsaw. Now I had designed a pocket for the bottom rails to fit into the leg uh, farther down as well, although I forgot to add it to the tool path. So instead using pocket screws here to attach. And I figured this would be better if it fit into the slot so that you wouldn't have to measure and line it up and all of that or use pocket screws. The other thing is that these rails are feeling a, a little bit thin. I mean definitely too thin to use with pocket screws, the ones that are going into the top. Uh, so deciding to just glue the base to the top. So I'm measuring out here where I should glue it down and again feeling that it would be better to have this somehow fit into the top so there would be less guesswork here. then adding a couple of pins to basically hold this in place until the glue dries. A 
Okay, so quick side note, as I'm assembling this, I'm also starting to think about um, people who might build this at home. Um, you know, what if you were selling flat packs of these or just people using the plans and assembling? And I think what you really want to do is eliminate any guesswork in terms of where something should fit. I mean, there should be no options, right? There should only be one way for something to fit together. So that's just a different way of thinking as opposed to if you are making something just for your own sake, uh, for your own home, where you're not gonna make you know, more than one. So just like a mindset moving forward. Okay, so next up, the first rendition of the chair. Again, the cut needed to be cleaned up a bit. Again, just like the desk, the end of the rails needed some rounding on the edges to fit into the groove. Now after checking the dry fit, it was time to glue all the joints in place and just holding it together here with a clamp as it's drying. And also doing a little finishing with some wax polish and sandpaper here. Decided to make a second version of the chair. Um, I think this is a perfect size for like a toddler and uh, be good for my kid for a little while longer, but I thought it would be nice to make something that he could kind of grow into. So this one is a little bit higher. So took this opportunity to adjust a couple of things that I, I wanted to change. First of all, there's a couple of sharper corners and edges here, and on this model they have been rounded so that there are nothing, there's nothing sharp on it. On this one we made it a little bit too tight, so you had to uh, round the edges here like with a chisel to get it to go in. So adjusted that on here, uh, which worked really good here and here, but forgot to adjust it here and here. So uh, that's going to be adjusted in the next version. Uh, decided to use Baltic birch plywood here. This is just half inch regular plywood and this is Baltic birch plywood and, and it's so much nicer. Um, it just looks so much better and cleaner and it's stronger. So that is a lot nicer. Now when cutting this I used um, an upcut bit and I got a lot of tear outs on the cut. So I thought okay let's address that for this version. So got a compression bit which is half up cut and half down cut. So if you set that up right it should produce good clean edges on both sides. And I did get clean edges on the bottom, not so much uh, on the top cut, so I got quite a lot of tear out. So I think what I need to do is I need to make sure that the first cut goes deeper so it gets to the down cut right away and then it gets the up cut on the bottom. So I think I just need to make it a little bit more aggressive right off the bat. In terms of design, if you're not using a CNC and you want to kind of recreate this by using like a jigsaw or something like that, it doesn't really matter too much in terms of the positioning of these rails, even uh, the angle or anything. What does matter is if these two pieces are the, the same, as long as everything lines up. So just something to keep in mind. But next I'm thinking about uh, rounding this over with a router uh, a little bit to just kind of clean the edges up a bit. Okay, so did a couple more cuts with the different changes to improve the chair. Uh, first of all, the grain direction was taken into account here. So the sides of the chair are mirrored for a more uniform look and the seat in the back are also positioned horizontally to keep the grain direction consistent. Also adjusted the depth of the cut to try to get a better result with the compression bit. And after a couple of tests, it turns out that if you set the pass depth to 0.3 inches on the first pass, it cuts perfectly in half inch Baltic birch. Uh, which actually means you only need two passes to cut these pieces out, so the whole process is quite fast. But I want to keep this video more about design and I will do another update on what I've learned more specifically about cutting on the CNC machine. Um, oh yeah, here. Uh, don't be too conservative when you position your pieces out on plywood. Here I had uh, put some cuts really close uh, to the edge and they just teared off. Um, I also thought it would be nice to add an engraving to the back, so switch to a 90 degree V engraving bit.
One thing I realized is that routing the sides of the pieces is a rather important step. It makes the chair look better, but it also eliminates the step of having to round the sides of the rails to fit into the slots in the sides of the chair. In terms of assembling the chair, it's pretty straightforward. It's a good idea to sand all the pieces first, then simply lay down one of the chair sides and add glue to the pockets and the pieces fitting into them, and then fit them into place and add glue to the other sides and then fit the last section on. And you may need a little gentle force <laughs> to fit everything into place. And it's also nice to use a clamp uh, to make sure that all the sections are gluing together properly. Also, I made the slots that the sides and the seat fit into to be exactly half inch high. Uh, but you know what? Half inch multi birch is more like 0.485 inches thick. But that discrepancy turns out to be quite perfect, actually. Uh, not too tight, just enough room to get a good fit. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't sand those ends down too far. Uh, but that worked out really good. Uh, now, so far, we've made five chairs and feeling pretty good about the, this last one. But now, let's work on desk version 2. So this is the first desk here now cut. And the, yeah, there are a couple of issues. I actually ended up taking this apart a bit, it removed the side rails because they weren't in quite right. And it turns out I hadn't gotten a good fit with gluing the top to the base. So part of that came off as well. Not ideal. So what really needs to happen in this next one is um, a more precise way to secure the, uh, the rails to the top. So a fresh sheet of Baltic birch plywood. And here are some redesigns that have been added. Additional height. The grooves for the side rails have been moved in a touch. And we've added some crenellations or tenons, I guess you can call them, uh, onto the rails. And also little mortises on the bottom of the top so that the base and the top can fit together. And as you can see, this more or less takes up a whole sheet of plywood. Of course, this is five by five feet and you might be able to squeeze this together a little bit more, but probably not that much. Of course, if you were using a four by eight foot sheet, you would have more space. So here we go, gluing the legs together again and adding some pins to keep them in place while the glue is drying. Then once the legs are glued together, routing all the parts, uh, not to the top though, where the tenons are, um, also routing the rails and the tabletop. I've been rounded all around and two of these have not. and uh, it went together pretty well. Love the tenons fitting into the mortises in the desktop. It's really great how that just clicks together and it's a really good fit. Although if you were making this without a CNC machine, I would probably skip that step and add some pocket screws where the leg part meets the rail part, if you know what I mean, like on the sides, because there is some more space there where you can uh, you know, add some pocket screws. So for both the chair and the desk here, the final version, uh, all you need to assemble is glue, perhaps a mallet and a few clamps is also handy to have on hand to make sure you really get the pieces fitting right. Okay, so next we sanded all the chairs and the desk, added some polyurethane, which really makes the beautiful plywood pop here. And uh, yeah, the little inspector seems to really enjoy his new desk and chair. Yeah, I think he'll be able to use these for years to come. He's getting close to three years old, so if your kid is anywhere between three to eight, I think these sizes would work. In terms of measurements, the desk height measures 20 inches, the seat of the chair measures 11 and three quarter inches, and the width of the chair is 12 inches. 
and it's kind of funny I just got these measurements from measuring my son and like how he is uh, but then after doing some research I realized that these are pretty standard sizes for kids furniture as well I just thought it was kind of funny now the, because of this splayed out design of the legs uh, the pieces, I mean, both the desk as well as the chair here, they are quite stable. I mean, he's been climbing all over here, like standing on the rails, moving around, and, and nothing has tipped over. It was surprisingly sturdy, uh, while at the same time being quite light, because he's also been carrying these around, reorganizing. Uh, so it's nice that they're not too heavy uh, or bulky either. So I loved making these. Obviously some trial and error and improvements and all that knowledge has been put into the, uh, the final plans. And again, I have these plans available for free for all of my patrons at $5 and up and otherwise available for sale in my shop. Now, the designs of these pieces are really ideal for CNC work. I designed them with that in mind. You know how the sides of the chair is one cut with different pockets cut out, the legs of the desk is one cut. And while I have a rather large machine, you could totally section out the different parts to cut and make these pieces on a thousand millimeter X-carve or a Shipoko machine. Another option, if you don't have a CNC machine but you'd like to cut this out on one, would be to check out your local makerspace. Now, if you want to try your hand at making this set by hand, you can print out the cutouts like I have here using multiple pieces of paper and then cut the border out, match everything up and tape the pieces together on the back side. Then you can glue the paper on the plywood with a glue stick and cut the pieces out using a jigsaw. And if you have a scroll saw that might come in handy for some of the more detailed pieces as well. Uh, because the trick is going to be cutting those half inch sections out where the plywood seat and back slips in uh, on the chair sides. That is going to be a little bit finicky. Now I do have all the SVG files and the different parts in PDFs. So all the design files are available within the plan um, as well as more detailed instructions uh, about how to assemble once you have the cuts of the pieces. Um, let me know if you have any questions. There was quite a lot of information. I was debating about how to make this video and I figured I really just want to uh, share everything that we learned throughout this process because there was quite a bit. Um, obviously it's about kind of learning how to use um, the new CNC machine um, but also like thinking about how to design furniture that fit together, that can be flat packed, uh, making plans for other people to use um, that are easy to follow and where you get a good result. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, hope you're doing good and I'll see you soon. Bye.